Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we'll be looking at one of the prehistoric progenitors of the dinosaur name. Thank you to Brant Hoffman 9459 for today's topic, the Iguanodon. To begin our story on the history of Iguanodon, we are going to have to go all the way back to 1822, a time not just before the genus Iguanodon existed, but before the name Dinosaur even existed. This discovery was made in the country of Great Britain, specifically a southern county called East Sussex. It was this year that obstetrician and amateur paleontologist Gideon Mantell, as well as his wife, amateur paleontologist Mary Ann Mantell, would discover the first fossil of Iguanodon in the form of a set of teeth. A common story associated with this discovery was that Mary Ann saw the teeth on the side of the road as the two were on their way to visit one of Gideon's patients, meaning our understanding of our distant past may simply be the result of a random happenstance. But some dispute this story, with even Gideon contradicting himself. Also, the story has no relevance on the rest of the history, so who really cares? All that matters is Gideon Mantell now has iguanodon teeth. Gideon would then bring the teeth to the Royal Society of London to be inspected by members of the faculty. But many in the scientific community simply dismiss them as fish or rhinoceros teeth. In 1824, paleontologist William Buckland would name the first genus of dinosaur, the Megalosaurus. Importantly, Megalosaurus was not technically the first member of the Dinosauria, the classification used to organize all dinosaurs. As the name Dinosauria would not be coined for another 17 years, and instead was recognized as a member of the Sauria, a group that would later include dinosaurs, but at the time only included reptiles like crocodiles. Hearing of Gideon's discovery, Buckland invited Gideon to present his findings to the scientific community as a potential new ancient Sauria organism. To reinforce his presentation of a new animal, Gideon sought to find a modern day equivalent to compare his animal to. While Gideon would struggle with this, college curator Samuel Stutchbury would note the resemblance of the teeth to modern day iguana teeth, which would lead Gideon to the name of the new dinosaur, Iguanosaurus. But since this name literally translates to iguana lizard, a friend suggested he simply shorten the name to Iguanodon. Gideon's animal is now named, but no one knew exactly what it would have looked like as the previously mentioned teeth were the only remains recovered for Iguanodon. This would change in 1834, when an incomplete fossil of Iguanodon was discovered and delivered to Gideon, identified by its distinctive teeth. This fossil would lead to the first artistic interpretation and fossil reconstruction of Iguanodon, but due to its incompleteness, was not very accurate to how we know it today. Most famously, the iconic spiked thumb was instead interpreted as a nose horn on the tip of its skull. These early interpretations often presented Iguanodon as a lumbering, heavy animal, influenced by the works of paleontologist Richard Owen, and would define Iguanodon and dinosaurs as a whole for years to come. We've been going over history for a while, so let's do some fast forwarding. 1841, Owens would coin Dinosauria, including three members, the Carnivorous Megalosaurus, Armored Hyliosaurus, and Iguanodon. 1878, 38 specimens of Iguanodon would be recovered over four years by miners Jules Croutier and Alphonse Blanchard, and overseen by supervisor Alphonse Briart. 1882, these skeletons were reconstructed by paleontologist Louise Dolo, who would be more accurate in the reconstruction, including moving the horn back to the thumb. <sighs> Moving into the 20th century, Iguanodon would not have any major revisions in our understanding. David Norman would consolidate our understanding of Iguanodon into his scientific piece, Basal Iguanodontia, 
and David B. Weishample would write Evolution of Jaw Mechanisms in Ornithopod Dinosaurs, redefining how we understood the eating behavior of Iguanodon and similar dinosaurs. The biggest change for Iguanodon would come in the 21st century. As advancements in fossil identification, particularly remnant protein technology, were made and previously discovered fossils were re-examined, many previously believed Iguanodon fossils were instead assigned to new genus. At one point, nine new genus of dinosaur were named to differentiate them from Iguanodon. However, as of now, only about three are still recognized, including Manteliosaurus, Barillium, and Hypsilospinus. As of today, there are two generally accepted species of Iguanodon within the genus, being Iguanodon bernisaratensis and Galvensis. Besides the two species being found in different areas of Europe, the two are very similar in appearance and size mostly varying in skeletal differences, like different positioning and number of vertebrae. As previously mentioned, the name was originally meant to be Iguanosaurus. However, this name literally translates to Iguana Lizard, which is fairly redundant as iguanas are lizards. Instead, the modern name Iguanodon includes Iguano, in reference to the lizard, and Dawn, the Latin word for tooth, translating to iguana tooth. This name obviously references the teeth of this animal, resembling that of modern day iguanas. Iguanodon is an ornithischian, or bird-hipped, dinosaur, and in particular is the namesake for a group of ornithischians known as the Iguanodontia. The Iguanodontia are an extremely diverse and successful group of dinosaurs that included members from the Middle Jurassic to the Late Cretaceous. Besides Iguanodon, members include the Sailback Oronosaurus, Tiny Dryosaurus, as well as the diverse Hadrosaur family, including members like the Corythosaurus and Edmontosaurus. Focusing on Iguanodon itself, early estimates by Gideon placed Iguanodon at almost 60 feet or 18 meters long. However, Modern estimates place the animal at about 33 feet, or 10 meters in length, and about 9 feet, or 3 meters in height. Based on this size, Iguanodon would have weighed almost 5 tons. Similar to their descendants, the Hadrosaurs, Iguanodon would often walk and graze on four legs, but were more than capable of moving on two, most often to run faster or prepare to fight rivals or predators. For fighting, besides their massive size, their most likely defense would be their spiked thumbs. The arms of Iguanodon were quite long and ended in four fingers with a fifth spiked thumb. This spike would range between two and six inches, and while media like to depict this as first and foremost a weapon to defend itself, scientists are not definitive on this conclusion. Some argue defense was only a secondary use, and was primarily used for stripping leaves and eating plants. The most likely answer would be that both uses were equally viable, being used for either situation. Regardless, Iguanodon had powerful back legs that, while strong, probably did not help it reach high speeds. Estimates believe Iguanodon could only reach about 15 miles or 24 kilometers per hour. So it is unlikely that outrunning predators was a viable option. Its body was bulky, ending in a straight tail to counterbalance itself. Its skull was similar to that of Hadrosaurs, with a toothless keratin beak at the front of its mouth used to strip stems and branches. These stripped plants would then be processed by rows of iguana-like teeth, grinding up vegetation for digestion. Unlike hadrosaurs, it is unlikely they had columns of replacement teeth, and overall, Iguanodon likely had much less teeth than an average hadrosaur. Iguanodon would have lived from the late Jurassic, 160 million years ago, all the way up to the early Cretaceous, almost 100 million years ago. 
Based on fossil evidence, both species would have lived throughout modern day Europe, specifically in the countries of Great Britain, Belgium, Germany, Spain, and Portugal. During this time, Europe was a tropical environment made up of a variety of different lush biomes like low-lying forests and wetlands. Whether these environments would be roamed by herds of iguanodon is not as straightforward as it may seem. While groups of up to 20 to 30 specimens of iguanodon have been found in the same area, seemingly showing evidence of herding behavior, many scientists believe that this is unlikely, instead simply occurring due to sudden events like flash flooding, killing off a number of iguanodons and then depositing their bodies into the same area. However, due to evidence in related species, it seems likely that Iguanodon would have formed herds with other members for protection. This herding would be necessary to protect against predators like the Eotyrannus and Neovenator. However, it also could have lived alongside fellow herbivores like the tiny Hypsilophodon and armored Polacanthus. Due to their prominence as one of the first named dinosaurs ever, Iguanodon has had significant historical and cultural impact throughout the years. In terms of historical prominence, the Crystal Palace would erect a pair of Iguanodon statues in 1852, being one of the earliest exposures the general public had ever had to dinosaurs, as well as defining the appearance of Iguanodon and dinosaurs for years to come. Iguanodon was even included in the Borough of Maidstone's 1949 Code of Arms due to their significance to the area. As for cultural significance, Iguanodon arguably rivals heavy hitters like Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops in terms of public recognition. This recognition has earned them a variety of roles throughout the years, including documentaries like 1992's The Dinosaurs, 1999's Walking with Dinosaurs, television shows like 2009's Dinosaur Train, as well as video games like 2018's Jurassic World Evolution as part of the Cretaceous Dinosaur DLC, and 2020's Path of Titans, just to name a few. And these are just minor roles. One of their most significant roles is most likely being portrayed as characters like Aladar, Bira, and Bruton in one of the worst Disney movies, 2000's Dinosaur. And yes, it is bad and we all know it. The same studio that brought us The Little Mermaid and Lion King also brought us The Love Monkey and we as a species have to live with that. The whole movie is brown and nothing happens. It's just dinosaurs walking for a full hour. Iguanodon's lizard-like appearance and massive size has come to define what dinosaurs look like to the general public. This public recognition and storied history has made Iguanodon a truly crucial dinosaur in the world of paleontology. And unlike the Disney movie, Iguanodon is always something Iguana see more of that's gonna do it for this episode thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed be sure to leave a comment below what you think of iguanodon and if you've heard this dinosaur before the video and before we get too many hate comments dizzy's dinosaur isn't that bad it's like a five out of ten it has its moments it's just mostly boring and dumb next week we've got another european dinosaur as we explore the basics on the Baryonyx. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.